welcome to episode 5. So today we are going to be making some basic console commands. They're quite useful, uh, seeing as we can use them to quickly test stuff in game or just to use them in general for actual gameplay use. So to get started, uh, we're going to fix a mistake that I made, which is that I said I, w I said we we're going to use first person, but I left it as third person. So make sure you've got that kept. Make sure you keep that as first person. Uh, just make sure you have it like that. Anyway, right, so I've changed that. So what we can do now is we can actually load into our game. And while that's loading, we can start on the console commands. So go into the game.cs file. Uh, and then we're going to create a new method. It's going to be a static method because uh, you don't want uh, the console command to, you don't want a method to be per an instance of this class. You want it to be static. So I could just do my game dot whatever method. So we're going to just create a static void. We get, we'll call it, uh, to start off, we'll just do a basic one that just kills every player on the map. So a method called kill everyone. And then to actually make it so it can be ran from the console. We do server cmd and then inside here we put the name of the command so we can just call it call kill everyone right okay so that's a basic command now if we put a quick log in here we can just put log.info test uh, log.info will print something to the console so if we save that and now in game we go to console start typing what was it kill everyone you'll see it's there then we just enter and then we see it prints uh, what we told it to so let's try something such as uh, killing every player on the map, seeing as that's what the console command is called. So you want to do a for loop for each loop uh, for each player in all dot of type. Uh, we actually need to import uh, link or link you whatever. So we only need to input that, and then all of type, uh, and then the type is going to be player, and then we put, and it's a method, so we do that. So this is getting uh, every player. So if you do entity uh, dot all, that return every entity uh, as a list. Yep, as a read-only list. So it'll return every entity, and we're just grabbing every entity that's of type player. So now inside this. Uh, for loop we can run stuff on the play so, so we could do player uh, we'll just do to kill them we'll do player dot take damage and then so the argument is damage info so we'll do damage info and then dot generic and then we'll do 100 because that's how much health they have so that will kill every player by dealing 100 damage to them so if we go in game uh, see it's saved we can add a bot uh, we've got a little bot we can both move we type kill everyone and we're both dead. See, so a health drops to zero. There's not really any death effects, so it's quite hard to tell. But there we go, it kills them. So that's a pretty basic console command. It just kills everyone. What about something that we want to uh, take arguments or something that we want to affect uh, the person who called it? So, create a new console command. We'll call this set health. Uh, I'll change the method name as well. Uh, and then in this one, we're going to get, we're going to start by getting the actual. Uh, person who called it so do var caller equals console system dot call dot pawn okay so what we're doing here is we're getting the caller which is a client so a client is someone connected to the server and then to get the put and to get the player from a client do client dot pawn so this is the client here and then we're doing dot pawn uh we we I put var here because that's a bit uh, you don't have to you can put player as well if you want to specify what it actually is uh, but pawn isn't is is an entity, not a player. So don't put player there. You can put entity, but just put var. Anyway, but make sure you try to define it when you can. But we're not sure exactly sure what pawn is gonna uh, what the pawn is gonna be. So we just put var, and then we can do it if call it equals null and then return because it might be called on the server where there's no actual player calling it. So now that we've got that, we can actually do stuff. So we can do like caller dot health uh, equals fifty. So remember, this is the player, not the client. So we're doing player dot health, and then we're setting the health to fifty. So now, if we're in game type set health, see it sets my health down to fifty. But what if we want to, uh, let's say, like specify what how much health they should be given in the actual uh, when we're typing it in console? Could do it. So we could just add an argument up here. It's pretty easy. Just to ha add however many arguments we want. So we could add an argument called health. 
like a float called uh, test, a string, just to add how many ever you want, and then there are obviously just the arguments you'd put into the console. So you could do it in health, and then you just do call it health equals health. So now if we go in game, we do set health, and then we can put a we can put a parameter uh, with a number, and that'll be what the health is set to. So it's set to seventy five, and then we can set it to like five hundred, set to five hundred. Uh, which is pretty cool. So now actually if we typed kill everyone you'd see it would just take 400 health rather than actually killing us. Uh, but we can, you can just fix that by uh, uh, taking all the health. Right, anyway, so we've got a nice command. We could also obviously, let's just test it by adding something else. So if you had string test then we could log that string here. So now, we, now we've got two arguments. So we do set health 100 and then we also put a like test string so it could be hello and now we'll print hello to the console that is pretty cool so finally let's try doing uh, a command that actually affects something in the world so let's say we're looking at uh, wherever our friend is so if we look at him then we could run a command that let's say like kills him or deals damage so let's copy this command we just made and then we'll rename it to damage target and then let's change the method name and then we want uh, something that we could put uh, we want a uh, parameter for the actual damage uh, we want the caller again because we need to do a trace from the caller so a trace is basically drawing a line and then it will tell you whatever it hits or what like the position it reaches so we're going to do a trace from the player's head to where they're looking at so basically we can get the entity uh, which my camera is looking at. So if I'm looking at here, then we can do a trace to get the that player. So to get a trace, we're going to do var tr, short for trace, equals trace dot ray. And then uh, you see it takes two parameters from to. So this is the position from and to. So the position from will be uh, the eye position of the caller. So we do caller to eye pause. And then we, to get uh, to the two, we just want to do from the iPods just forward. So we'll do caller the iPods, and then we're going to add uh, the forward angle. So we'll do i ro uh, uh, caller the i ro rotation uh, dot forward, uh, and then we'll just that's that's, and then we want to uh, multiply that. So just make it go like infinitely forward until it reaches something. Right, and now, uh, remember this is just a method, so we want to add, we can add stuff onto that, uh, we can run methods on that method. So we could do, uh, the first thing we want to do is use hitboxes. Remember, this isn't the end of a line, it would actually just look like this. This is what it would look like. Let me write it out like this first, and then oh, I'll just, uh, yeah, I'll write it out like this first. So we'll do dot ignore, color, and then I'll have another one, dot run. Uh, that's the one you want to run after you've run all the other stuff. Uh, not ingle ignore. Okay, so and to make it neater, obviously that's why I was putting on the line before because it's a bit neater. You can see what each thing is doing. So we have that. So now we've got a trace that does it from the place I pause and does it a bit and the end pause is a bit forward of the eye position. So now that we've got the trace, we can actually get the entity that the player is looking at. So we do if dot if tr dot entity. Uh, is player victim and then in here so what what this is doing is it's saying if the entity is of type player uh, then it's going to give us this variable called victim here then we can use that so now we can do victim dot stuff victim dot like damage or whatever so yeah so it's basically check if it's the type and then it will give us so if it's not the type then it won't run the code but if it is it will give us this variable that we can use and we also want to do it if uh, they want to do the and for and uh, victim dot is valid. Right, okay, so we're basically checking if it's of type victim and if the actual entity is valid. And we go victim dot take damage and then we can just copy this. Which will take damage and then that damage variable up here. And then finally to actually test, uh, to actually show that it's working, we can just copy this up here. Uh, get every player and then we just want to log every player's health so let's do that and then we're gonna do a formatted string so we could put uh, player we're gonna just get the name so we'll do player.getClientOwner 
dot name. So get client owner just gets the owner. Uh, if you hover over it, it says it will get the owner of the uh, entity, the client who owns that entity. So in, that will be the player. So we'll, and then we'll get their name, and then we will get do player dot health. Right. Okay. So now if we run damage target, while looking at this person, and let's put ten you'll see it takes 10 health away from that player. And then if we did uh, 100, you'll see it will kill them. It was killed and then his health is now zero. Okay, so that is some basic console commands. Uh, you can use them for e quick testing, so you quickly set up like a test console command and then you could like log some stuff inside it just to check you know, the values of certain things. Uh, and you could also use it to always like give players stuff. You could like create a command that gives you a weapon. It's very useful to know, and uh, I'll be using it a lot even in the next episode when we're going to be using entities. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, make sure to watch the next episode. Uh, goodbye.